This is the third module in Lecture 1 of uh, Legal and Professionals. This module is talking about the focus and expectations for new lawyers, whether that be um, an expectation of um, other members of the community, expectation of clients, and the focus um, that new lawyers should contemplate as they are just about to enter the profession. So what is the legal profession? Well, it is a profession with standards and traditions, and I'd have to say, having been a member of the profession for a long time, it is a profession that's a privilege to be part of. But that involvement and part of the profession brings with it that uh, we will have a standard, and that is an expectation from a variety of people in the community, including lawyers and non-lawyers alike. So the legal profession is, is not just solicitors, it's not just barristers, of course it's made up of many different facets um, and some of those, for example, are stated on slide 4. From a point of view of focus, I was at the Family Law Intensive in 2013 where um, Federal Magistrate, as he then was, um, he's on a um, judge out of belly, set out eight elements of focus for newly admitted lawyers. And I thought it was worthy to restate these eight elements of focus that the judicial officer thought um, was of some importance. And if you have a look at those on slide five, um, the first one his honour considered needed to be foremost was that of reputation. And of course, on reflection, you'll appreciate that the person most responsible for reputation is yourself. What type of lawyer do you want to be? Um, importantly, what type of lawyer do you want others to perceive you as? Um, a, a lawyer who um, abides by high professional standards, whose um, word can be counted on, or um, a person whose um, tactics in litigation or um, other forms of legal dealings leaves a lot to be desired. Um, a bad reputation is one that is very hard to dislodge. And that can be true even of, for example, um, being a fairly uh, fierce advocate for your client and embracing adversarial litigation um, as much as you possibly can. If you then seek to shy away from that way of practice, um, the reputation of you being a fierce litigator will be one um, difficult to shift. Communication is again an, an essential element and this is going to be a common theme through this subject, how to be an effective communicator. And communication in many respects, um, not just um, within our office environment or work environment, with our clients, um, and with anyone else that we come in contact with. Certainly Janice Purvis from Law Cover will um, state that the most form common form of complaints about lawyers is really all driven back to communication, how poorly a lawyer communicates as to the cost of a matter, um, the expectations um, around that is sort of linked in with communication. So these are important aspects for you to consider and start reflecting and thinking about as you are about to enter into the profession. Appropriately adversarial, um, again be mindful of the solicitor's rules um, under the uniform um, legislation and uniform rules that are appropriate in that regard. Preparation, preparation, preparation. There is no shortcut that um, will enable you to adequately represent your client, whether it be in court or a transaction, if it's not uh, linked to appropriate preparation. And you need to embrace that for your assessment tasks, whether it's the online workshops, whether it's the face-to-face -face workshop, um, or whether it's in fact engaging in your client interview, or in fact the negotiation. All about preparation. An interesting one, I think, um, is choice of counsel. And as a young lawyer, what tends to happen is that the firm that you go into, you will then um, 
sort of flow into the barristers that um, that firm briefs and it will take you a while to work out relationships that you can establish with barristers. Um, I was recently involved in a discussion with a number of um, my contemporary uh, lawy lawyer friends, um, all family lawyers, and we were talking about barristers. Uh, one solicitor indicated just as she'd sort of been forging a relationship with a the barrister, they either got appointed or to a silk or to the bench. Um, and so she at times felt quite uh, challenged about then having to restart and form a new relationship so that you know how that person works. Um, choice of counsel isn't the person who takes you out to lunch or buys you coffee. You must constantly have in your mind, is this person prepared? When you walk into a conference, have they read the brief? Um, you will be able to observe fairly quickly when you sit in the back of a courtroom those counsel who have the attention of the court, who are articulate, who um, clearly have a knowledge of their matter in comparison to those who um, are less so prepared. So an important learning point for you to consider when the focus of, well, who will I pick? So when we're looking at expectations of a young lawyer, there, as I said, there is a, um, a whole ambit of lawyers and non-lawyers that um, are part of that sphere that we need to consider. And when we look at judicial officers, certainly one of the um, aspects from my conversation with judicial officers is um, their concern as to the lack of courtesy and court etiquette that is currently um, being exhibited by new graduates. Now, um, everyone has started from a lack of exposure, lack of um, experience, um, but it really is all about doing the best that you can so that um, whilst that is understood and, and in some ways accepted and taken into consideration, um, it's not the be all and end all because you have been um, embraced professional courtesy, whether that be to witnesses that uh, might be part of a process or to the various judicial officers or in fact colleagues. We will talk about court etiquette and there's one of the online tasks is uh, what etiquette is there in the courtroom and there are some resources online for you to consider. I would never go into a court matter, even if it was a simple, what you might call a mention. A mention is where the matter is mentioned before the court. It's not going to be a hearing, but it will be a procedural aspect. It might be getting a new hearing date. It might be adjourning a matter. It might be withdrawing a matter, seeking consent orders to be made. Um, you need to make sure that you have a proper preparation of any matter. Know who your client is. Is your client the applicant, the respondent, um, the plaintiff, the defendant? Whichever jurisdiction you are in will um, affect the terminology of how a party is called before the court. Having a, a knowledge of the case and importantly, whilst you'll have an understanding of the relevant law, know the court procedure and protocols. Most courts will have case management guidelines. They are absolutely essential for you to um, access to read and have an understanding of what the judicial officer is expecting those who are appearing before them to to know or to act or to ask for in particular matters. So still um, on that aspect, well what do other lawyers, what's their um, expectation of young practitioners? Well certainly um, from my experience with speaking to experienced uh, lawyers is that they're there's an understanding that we all start um, from a lack of experience, but learning from your mistakes and keeping up to date is, is certainly um, of major importance. The courage to stand up for ethical foundations, so maintaining that moral compass, understanding the ethical constraints that you, that you as part of this profession are in some ways sort of part of. Um, a professionalism, all linked into your reputation. How do you... Um, how do you act with fellow colleagues? Uh, it's also worthwhile to note that it's not going, it's probably going to be quite common that at times you will come in contact with someone you've been to law school with or someone you may have been to school with or you know socially. They may be on the other side and there can be a tendency to be um, 
very friendly and to be a bit flippant at times. Just be mindful of that, particularly if your client um, is in the location and is able to observe your interaction with the fellow practitioner. Always maintain a degree of professionalism. There's plenty of time outside the arena where your client is for you to um, you know, have a social engagement with uh, friends and other colleagues. Non-lawyers, again, um, they have an expectation of young practitioners to be respectful um, of other professions um, and to show an, an element of professionalism. I learned at a very um, young age and certainly when I started doing advocacy in the court process that the administrative staff and court officers are absolutely essential to um, an effective running of the system and you may need to call upon them at times you might be need to be in two courts at the same time so you'll need for your one matter to be held in the list um, politeness goes a long way in the court process um, yes you are a lawyer um, but yes all those other people are in a profession as well and it's important to bear that in mind that everyone has a job and um, it's a matter of working together to get and come What's the expectation of a client? What do they really want to achieve? Um, well, they certainly want their problem solved. They also want to understand what is going to happen. Don't forget, you've been through law school and as you're just about to start your law career, you've got some understanding of the legal framework. Many clients don't. Uh, the first time that they come and they see you, their first conference might be the first time that they've ever been um, into a solicitor's office. It could be quite intimidating for them. Have a think about that. Clients want to understand what the likely outcome is. Often clients want certainty and it's, a, it's one of our roles as lawyers to in fact talk about how uncertain the court process is um, and a negotiated outcome is really the only one that um, clients can have any degree of certainty on. How long it will take people's perception of the court system is often um, at odds with reality. There, there are huge time delays in various court systems and um, if, once you're involved in a particular area of the law, become acquainted with, well, what are the time delays? Um, and how much it's going to cost is always something that is the focus of a client's attention and rightly so. Um, lawyers charge significant significant amounts of money for their advice um, and what clients are receiving from their perception is a lot of words, documents, um, but ultimately they want an outcome for the problem that they have. This really is all linked to communication. You need to engage a client early, you need to um, form that relationship so that you can have um, a good working relationship with them and embrace those queries that a client will have as to how long it's going to take, manage their expectations, um, give them the information as to the court process and of course how much it's going to cost we are obliged to make regular um, advices and cost disclosures to the client and for understandable reasons. What do employers want of young practitioners? Well slide 10 talks about um, a number of things. Attention to detail is certainly one aspect that um, I don't know whether students have quite grasped how important that is for employers. So um, at one stage in my career I was a senior associate at Course Chambers Westgarth and one of my tasks was to cull the summer clerk applications and my first cull was based on grammar and spelling. Um, was the was the letter um, from the student um, appropriately constructed, um, spelling mistakes, etc. Because my view is, well, if they couldn't, um, you know, take the time and attention to detail in writing a letter to a law firm, what would it, what would be, you know, their response in doing legal work? So you had to start somewhere. It is an important aspect and one that. Um, you need to be very mindful of. There's really no excuse for poor punctuation and spelling. It is a matter of you um, taking the time to complete an assessment task or another task on time so that you can review it um, with some um, appropriate time restraints. 
Employers also, I think, are increasingly wanting their young graduates to have an understanding and an appreciation of the billing system and costs. Your wages come from somewhere. Law firms are a business um, that is uh, a fact of life. There's course criticism as to the billable hour and what does that mean and the stress on young graduates and it is very real um, but I think there certainly is an expectation that lawyers need to young graduates need to engage in an understanding um, as to what their target is and how's that calculated and what maybe they can do to assist them in that regard so have a look at those points on um, slide 10 and maybe keep them in mind as you to em embark on your new career so slide 11 talks about the qualities of being an effective lawyer and I've talked about those in some context and one of the later lectures on professionalism we will touch on those prospects that we talked about in the core values and the core skills and 12 are in fact generic professional skills of the legal practitioner which will take you into any profession that you might um, embark on after you've finished your degree and your admission is complete. So um, priority and delegation, analysis of problems, time management, planning and organisation, active listening, these are all skills whilst um, embraced, being embraced for a legal practitioner will, as I say, be part of any profession you enter into. So lastly, um, be organised. That poor lady, sometimes I've felt like that when I've been in the middle of a trial with paper everywhere, on the telephone, like where do you start? Things seem overwhelming um, and you just don't want to be that way. So try and be organised, um, get some good skills started now, get your assessment tasks and make sure you've got a diary as to when you should in fact be starting various aspects and finally you are nearly there you are on the down downhill run so to speak PLT is the last aspect of your um, process before being able to then be admitted as a lawyer so trust you or trust me I'm almost a lawyer and that's the end of um, the third module